Good morning, chickadees. Welcome back to another day. So today is going to be another Cooking for Sandy day. I am going to do, I think I've got probably another three type meals to do for her. We'll see what we end up with. But I'm going to start this morning by rehydrating some dried seaweed. So this is sort of rehydrating now. It starts out like that and I am going to rehydrate that for Sakura who is my little crayfish and also some of my little shrimp so I'm gonna get them a little bit of breakfast started and I will see what we're gonna do for Sandy today there we go she was quite happy to take that and uh, this is the first time that I've given her that, but they would eat algae uh, and a lot of sort of rotting vegetation and things on the bottom of the river or stream. So it's not unusual to give them some plant matter. A little bit later today, once she's had this, I'm going to try her with a couple of other, some dried shrimp. Um, and I'll give her a little bit of what we're testing out here. But... That is Sakura enjoying her wakame breakfast. All right, she finished that piece. So <laughs> I've shown her that I have another one. She takes that. And then she's just got to work out where to start on it. <laughs> I put a piece in there for the shrimp and they have just started to find it. So we'll see, hopefully we'll have a little shrimp swarm here shortly. Okay, on to feeding the peoples. So I know I wanted to do a butter chicken for Sandy. Um, that's one of her favorite things. And I have a tasty um, tikka masala kit, which I'm just going to edit very slightly. The spices for tikka masala are the same as butter chicken. It's just um, made slightly differently. So I have some chicken that I'm thawing out for that. And I also had some thin sliced pork chops. I'm going to thaw those out and figure out something to do with those for her. But I think before I do too much and get started on this, especially because the meat has to thaw, I'm going to have a quick bite of like mini breakfast. <laughs> um, I have some white cheddar rice cakes and they are 45 calories each. And then this particular laughing cow, the 25, sorry, the uh, garlic and herb is one of the 25 calories a wedge one. So I'm going to have one of those. Then I have some hard salami and they are, let me get that light off of there, 120 calories for six slices. And I have some tomato from yesterday and... I think that's going to be it. I, I was debating whether or not I wanted to do some egg, but I'm not sure what I'm going to have later in the day. And because I haven't tracked it, let me just do this and then we'll go from there. So I have some meat I'm going to thaw for doing some stuff for Sandy. I'm going to have a bite of breakfast and then we'll see what we get up to. So I had been doing some research on what was okay to give them and somebody had asked if you could give them tomato and the answer was yes, that they often like a soft bit of tomato. So when I was cutting up that for my breakfast, I offered her a little piece of that and she dropped the seaweed and was like, nope, that's what I want. <laughs> so she's now enjoying a piece of tomato.
So it turns out the tomatoes are a favorite for the shrimp too. <laughs> they're, uh, they're not as keen on the seaweed, but they definitely like the shrimp. And I don't know if you can see that little tiny blue guy in the left. That is a baby. So I have uh, a little baby blue. There's actually, I've seen about six of them in here. And you don't generally get to see them too much, but let's see. There we go. He's so cute. So I wanted to show you some work I was doing in here today. I have a couple of small tanks in the bedroom. And this is Marvel. He is a Dumbo Beta. And I added a little platform bed for him. They like having something to rest on near the surface of the water. So I made him a new little bed today. And hopefully he will be very excited about getting in there. He won't probably go in there until I turn the lights off tonight, but uh, he's quite happy with that. And then I have this tank that I've set up. There's nothing in there yet, but I don't know. I might put a new, another beta in there. I might get another crayfish, but I have another little 6.5 gallon tank here. So if you have a suggestion of what you think would be nice in there, keep in mind I have Sakura and the shrimp, and then a couple of the beta boys, the goldfish tank, the platy tank. So this size, this is perfectly fine for one beta and a cleanup crew. I don't see Ray Ray, but uh, yeah, if you have a suggestion of what I should do with this tank, then by all means, let me know in the comments. I didn't realize how late it's gotten. It's like 7.30 already. I haven't done very much cooking for Sandy or myself today. I have been playing with the fish. Um, <laughs> so I am going to give Sakura some dinner. She is getting some mini blood worms and they basically look like that. Um, I haven't given her these before. I don't know if she had them at the store previously, but let's see what she thinks. Yep, definitely happy with those. Focus, Lisa. Focus. <laughs> Stop playing with your fish. Okay, I got to get on to this cooking. So I figured out what I'm going to do with the chops. Last night... About two in the morning, couldn't sleep. I went ahead and finished those mashed potatoes, the ones that I started yesterday. So those are done and in the fridge. And I think I'm just going to do these chops for her. I found this recipe, I found several recipes, um, for doing them in the Instant Pot. And I do find that they are less likely to dry out versus pan frying or roasting in the oven or air frying or something like that, if you do them in the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna try this recipe. The only difference is that these are super thin and most of the chop recipes that I found call for like one inch chops. I don't have those. So let's see what we can do. All right, the recipe calls for salt and pepper. So I'm going to use the Kenders salt, pepper and garlic blend, paprika. Um, it does call for onion powder, but I think the garlic powder in the Kenders is gonna work as a good replacement for that. And then brown sugar. You're going to make that into a rub, a dry rub, and you're going to sear off 
the chops on both sides just to get a little bit of color. Then you're going to turn off the saute function and we're going to cook them just a little bit in some liquid. So I have some chicken broth. The recipes do call for uh, water, but you can use chicken broth. Some Worcestershire sauce. I have some reduced sodium Worcestershire and then some salted French butter. So then when that is finished, so let me see, I think most of the recipes, and I, they're all in the description box, most of the recipes call for like a five minute cook time and a five minute manual release. But these are super, super thin. So I think I'm going to try three minute cook time, five minute natural release, because they're already going to have be cooked some from the searing. And then I'll do a temp test. And if I need them to cook longer, I'll put them back in for a couple of minutes. But I really think for this super thin ones, three minutes is going to be all that needs to happen. Okay, so combine dry in dry spices, paprika, salt, pepper, garlic, and brown sugar. Rub that on those. We're going to sear them off in a little bit of butter, then turn the Instant Pot off of sear onto pressure cook. I'm going to then add the chicken broth and Worcestershire sauce, a little bit more butter. It's for Sandy. She can have all the butter she wants. And uh, I'm going to cook that for three minutes. And then let's see where we're at. Once I finish this, I'm just going to... Oh, uh, the sauce that they're cooked in. When they're done, I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch, make that into a bit of a gravy. It should be a really nice, tasty gravy. And she can have that with the mashed potatoes and the pork. And then I'm just going to rinse the liner out and we'll get started on the butter chicken. All right, that is already almost finished. So I had it come up to temperature or under pressure. And it's actually on natural release already, and that won't last very long because it wasn't under pressure for that long. So I'm going to get the next part ready. We are going to do a variation on butter chicken using this chicken tikka masala kit from Tasty. So I have the chicken, which I'm going to cube up, and then the kit itself has rice, a dry seasoning packet that you use for the chicken, and then a sauce packet. And basically... Let's see what we've got. So it says that you're normally you'd add an onion. She doesn't like onions in hers, so we're not going to do that. Basically, you cook your rice and then you coat your chicken with the seasoning. Um, put them in the skillet, cook off the chicken, add the onions if you were cooking that. Then reduce the heat to low, stir in the sauce and cream, which um, heavy cream, heavy cream. Stir in the cream, cook one to two minutes until heated through, and then serve. So there's not a whole, whole lot to it. Now, the difference is the spice is very similar between tikka masala and butter chicken. The difference is butter chicken is a little milder and it's a little creamier. So tikka masala, you generally tend to leave more of the tomatoey sort of acidity kind of bite flavor to it. But for this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter when I'm cooking that in the sauce part. And then I'm actually going to add more cream. It calls for half a cup, I think. What do we got? Half a cup of heavy cream or 2% milk. I think I'm going to go, I'll see what half a cup looks like. But I think I'm probably going to end up doing like three quarters of a cup. Just the butter and the heavy whipping cream will make it much more like butter chicken. Then I just need to cook the rice and it's all done. So the pork chops are hopefully going to be beautifully done in just a minute. And then we'll get started on this. All right, here is our butter chicken finished and looks good, tastes good, beautiful, no problem. The only thing is 
This says there should be five servings per container of one and a third cups prepared. But I, I added some stuff and tweaked some measurements and I still am not gonna get five servings. So this is gonna be my dinner. Now I did make a ring with the rice like pushed out so that you could see it. So the inside is actually empty. So I don't have any more rice than I made for Sandy. But I added half a cup of chicken broth to the paste mix just to give us some more sauce. And then I did go ahead and do three quarters of a cup of the heavy cream. And even then, you know, these are not big containers. So if I kind of show you, right, this is a little container. And basically I've got two servings for Sandy and my dinner tonight. Now it's very tasty, but <laughs> tasty made, there is definitely not five servings when made as instructed, unless the onions made up for a huge amount. And I didn't use one pound of chicken breast, so maybe they're talking about a lot more chicken. I don't know. Okay, anyway, I am going to have some dinner, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, so the shrimp have found the blood worms. We got a little... Lady and the Tramp action going on there. They were both trying to have the same one. All right, so we have one of the orange guys has one. And then over here, one of the reds and the golds. And then there is the dark blue. And the other ones haven't come down yet, but the shrimp approve of the blood worms too. All right, with this, I am done for the night. So this is mashed potatoes that I finished in the wee hours this morning. <laughs> and I've got her basically two servings there. And then two of the chops and two little gravy servings. So she can split those out and have a couple of meals out of that. And then the only thing I have left to do is on the day that I go down, I'm actually going to make her some salmon and asparagus on the day itself. And I think at the moment, today's Tuesday, I'm pretty sure she wants me to come on Thursday. So I'm just going to get all this in the fridge for her. And yeah, then I need to adjust my recipe servings, see how many calories I have left for the day, and we'll go from there. All right, in other news, in other non-fish related news, <laughs> I am starting two new projects with my painting. I am still working on these guys. This is the Von Drack Manor set, and I'm still working on that. But I am going to start this guy, and he is very, very cool. I'm going to paint him as a frost giant. He is made by a company called Capsule Chibi, and he was 3D printed for me by a dear friend who has a printer. And I have just done, uh, I did a white prime, and then... I have done a coat of Gravelord Gray, which is the speed paint, to basically bring out the details so that I can see what's going on. And that was doing really well. Um, it, this is going to be such a cool little mini to paint. And he was going very, very well until my hands decided they didn't like what was going on. And I dropped him. And he actually broke there. So he has another axe, uh, but unfortunately it basically snapped off. So I am going to have to fix that, but I have him. And then this guy, 
look at the inside. I don't know if I can, I can't go too close because it'll get blurry, I think. But he has very, very cool potions and random things inside his cloak. Um, there's a little bit of detail there on his jacket and his vest. And then the back is pretty plain. He just has a satchel. He's got a little bit of detail on his boots, but that part is going to be super fun. I just have to make sure that I have my hands steady enough to do that. But that is the two guys that I'm adding to my workflow.